In order to understand how strange and creepy the history of false teeth truly is, we have to go all the way back to the beginning, the ancient world, more specifically China and Egypt. Remains found in China that are more than 4,000 years old show teeth replaced with carved bamboo pegs that were hammered into the jawbone to hold them in place. Ow! Egyptian mummies from 2,000 years later have fake teeth that were wired into the gums, kind of like the world's worst set of braces. Oh, and the teeth were usually, uh, human teeth. Yeah, and that's not just an ancient thing, but we'll get back to that. The Etruscans of Northern Italy invented a much less distressing way to replace lost teeth that didn't involve jabbing things into gums or jawbones. Instead of replacing individual teeth one by one, they came up with their own form of dentures where animal teeth were fastened together with big gold bands, basically like an ancient <laughs> version of a grill, and just as stylish. But throughout most of history, the best and most desirable type of fake tooth was always a human tooth. If you think about it, it's gross, but it also kind of makes sense. What looks more natural in your mouth than another human tooth? The problem is all the weird, cruel, and chilling ways people got their hands on human teeth. Grave robbing was quick and easy if you were willing to steal from the dead and desecrate a grave which apparently people were. For those unwilling to dig up graveyards at night, old battlefields were the ticket. People called them Waterloo teeth, named after the massive battle that brought down Napoleon. Doctors, dentists, and people just trying to make a dime would head to old battlegrounds and search for the teeth of dead soldiers in the dirt. Yikes, and that's just the teeth taken from the dead. The poor would sometimes sell their own teeth to make some money when times were particularly tough. And even worse, many people had teeth taken from their mouth against their will. In the US, slaves would sometimes be forced to have their teeth pulled to make high-end dentures for the rich and powerful. Even the most famous founding father with false teeth took part. That's right. Records show that George Washington himself paid several unnamed slaves 122 shillings for a total of nine teeth, a deal they really didn't have the option to refuse. Luckily, by the time of the American Revolution, French physicians were finding ways to use porcelain to craft false teeth instead. They looked much better and involved way less torment. The problem is that pure porcelain is prone to scratching, cracking, and chipping. But in the early 1800s, a Philadelphia goldsmith figured out how to fix that. He mounted the false teeth on 18 karat gold plates with springs and swivels, which helped strengthen and protect the porcelain. For the first time, people had quality dentures that looked natural, lasted longer, and weren't quite so problematic to produce. Today, dentures are made of a mishmash of materials, porcelain, acrylic, nylon, or metal, none of which are human teeth, even if they look more real than ever before. So next time you're too tired to trudge into the bathroom and brush your teeth before bed, just remember how much worse it could have been 